802.15.4 as a protocol has no replay protection. Okay, what's a replay attack? We, we take a valid encrypted packet, we send it back into the network. Okay? We don't know what the packet is that we send, but maybe we can observe the circumstances that happen once we inject that packet. Okay? Well, once I find a packet that's interesting, I send it again and, and again and again and again. Zigbee has, by specification, replay protection, but as far as I've seen, none of the vendors can implement it because it breaks other parts of the specification. Okay? It breaks normal use of Zigbee. So, I call that meager replay protection because honestly, I haven't seen anybody implement it yet. So I can take an encrypted packet, inject it into the network, and keep sending it over and over and over again. Does that sound like another attack you might have come across one time or another? Is that, that kind of like an ARP replay attack? I mean, is it really that different? No, it's, it's the same thing, okay? We're just doing something differently now. So um, consider a case where uh, a, a, maybe a hydro plant is using Zigbee to control the spill gates. And you can send a Zigbee message to the spill gate as the operator that says open the spill gate one degree and that lets out more water. Okay? If I replay that message, what's going to happen? It's going to open a, an, another degree. And what happens if I, open, if I send that packet 180 times? Okay? Well, it's going to open 180 degrees, right? Or maybe 90 degrees depending on the configuration. That's not a good thing, right? We don't, we don't want that. That's, that's not good at all. These are the kind of attacks that really work against Zigbee networks. They're not really that complicated. Now, it is encrypted traffic, so we need to be able to find a way to pick out the packet that does something useful for us, but that's just a little trial and error, okay? So the attack to do this is called ZB replay attack, where you can use ZB replay, read through, a packet capture file, extract out the one or two or however many frames you want to replay, and tell ZB Replay just to send them back into the network again. Okay? Very simple tool, replay these packets. Now, what ends up happening when you replay those packets is completely up to you. Okay? It based, it's based on what you decide to replay and the relative vulnerability of the network to replay attacks. But I can tell you that I've used this against multiple customers and it's been very effective. Okay? Uh, Joe Grand had an awesome talk uh, at Hack in the Box earlier, or late last year or earlier this year, it's all kind of a blur at this point, um, called Hardware is the New Software. Okay? And it was an awesome talk because basically his message is, we're doing better at software development. Not awesome, but better, okay? The hardware guys are light years behind the software guys. And there's no patch Thursday for hardware, okay? There is no way to fix that stuff. We're adapting Zigbee attacks into exploring the hardware of systems as well. When you think about Zigbee, you think about lots of little devices, right? The, the thermostat in your house or the, the radio in your washing machine or, you know, there's, there's places where they put Zigbee devices on bridges to measure the vibrations for structural engineers to make sure the bridges are safe still, okay? We're seeing it all those different places. Well, you know, what happens if I steal one of those devices? Let's say the key is provisioned at the factory on the device. Okay? Well, if I get that device and I extract the memory from that device, can't I also get the key? Sure. Okay? And let's look at how we can do that. All right? So, ZB, uh, KillerB includes a tool called ZBFind. Okay? ZBFind is a little GUI tool to give me the ability to find Zigbee devices. I'm going to run ZBFind on channel 11 here, and it gives me the little GUI tool. And by default, it operates in passive mode. It only sniffs, but my device isn't talking at the moment. So I'm going to turn it into active discovery mode, and it sends those Zigbee ping messages out to look for devices. And, and it found my device here in the front of the room. When I click on the device, it gives me additional detail. I can see you know, the device is about six feet away. Here's the address information. Here's the relative signal level, Okay, some additional information about it. And then I've got the signal level meter here that gives me a hint as to what the signal strength is. So as I get farther away from the Zigbee device, 
Come on, don't call me a liar. Okay, the signal level will go down, and you can see kind of the, the graph there on the bottom, graphing that out. And as we get closer and closer to the device, okay, my signal strength should get much, much higher. Okay. Hmm. Looks like I found another Zigbee device in the area too, on top of that. <laughs> sure, if you want to turn it on. This is not practice, so now we're, we're running into, this might actually crash demo time, but we'll see how it goes. Yes? Is the distance based on signal strength, or is there actually the timing that's random enough to get the uh, The distance is based off signal strength information. I'm just using the free space path loss formula to be able to measure it out. I'm not using any TDM like stuff. That's uh, you know, I'm not really good at math, so that's harder than I want to get involved with. But, oh, I don't know what channel that's on, Mike, but. What channel? 11? Okay. So, uh, while Mike's setting that up, so we can look at another example of that, um, I wanted to point out that Mike Kershaw actually did a lot of the heavy lifting for this tool sitting up here in the corner of the room. As Mike point, pointed out to me, he had to bust out a geometry book to figure out this right here. So, I'm thankful for that. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> I, I'm bad at math, as I think I might have mentioned. Okay, is that running? Yeah. Okay. So now we can see there's other devices in the room as well, and you know it's hard for me to move my laptop in this particular case. Oh, can I move that? That might be. Oh, well. Okay, you're going to give me this, huh? That's awesome. All right. And you know, as we get, as we get closer and closer, it it should uh, you know go in more and more to the green area here to help me find out where that device is. Okay? Awesome. Thank you for that. See, that wasn't just a canned demo. It wasn't a video and you couldn't tell the difference. Okay. Of course, you don't know if... Oh, fun. Okay. So, uh, after you find the device, you know, you, you steal it. Okay? That's, that's basically what you, what you want to do. Um, this is me in, in front of the electrical meter on my house. Um, this picture pissed a lot of people off recently. So I just want to add the disclaimer, don't do this at home, okay? I took that picture before I even knew how to remove an electrical meter. That's not even close to how you move an electrical meter, okay? So just, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't try that, okay? <clears throat> I look good there, okay. Once you get that device, and what we do in a lot of cases is we take the hardware and then we reverse engineer it. And then we figure out what kind of a chip is on the device. This is a TI chip in this particular development board here on this little uh, daughter card that's right here. And we figure out what the hardware does. Are there EEPROMs? Can we dump the EEPROM off of the device? Is it a smart a system on chip, Zigbee radio, or is it just a radio only? Well, if it's radio only, then the key information has to go from the microcontroller to the radio. And if I have a bus sniffer, I can sniff that data out by examining some of the like, uh, serial peripheral interface SPI protocols and, and things like that. Okay. One of the tools that we used to do this is a tool called GoodFed. Anybody catch Travis's talk the other day? Okay. Travis Goodspeed made a wonderful open source uh, hacking hardware platform called the GoodFed. The GoodFed gives me the ability to interface with the board and then interface with that chip to attack it and exploit it in interesting ways. Okay. So with the GoodFed, Travis found an interesting vulnerability that's common across Texas Instruments in Ember uh, system on chip Zigbee microcontrollers. What he found out was that these devices have what's called a soft fuse or software fuse, where when the manufacturer programs the device, he shuts off debug functionality on the chip so that you can't extract all the data from the chip. The only thing you can do as a user with the good fit or with the actual debugging interface is clear that chip. And once you clear it, now none of the code is still on that chip anymore. What Travis discovered was you can clear the chip so that the code is no longer present, but the RAM stays in memory. So I can